Dr. Chief Robert Joseph is a peace builder who is passionate about overcoming racism and intolerance not only in Canada but globally as well. His experiences as a survivor of Canadian residential abuse led him to found Reconciliation Canada. Chief Joseph, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Unfortunately, many Canadians really don't know a lot about the history of residential school abuse, despite the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I think it's coming, but some people are still unaware. Would you mind just sharing a little bit about what that experience was like for you? Yeah, I got to the uh, residential school when I was six. I was just turning seven, but I was little, and I spoke this language, Kwakwala, and I'm one of the last fluent speakers now because they didn't allow us to live or speak those lang that language in school. But I got to this um, strange place with strange people running it who would be my guardians for the next little while. And there was so much abuse in the first year, uh, um, uh, so much physical abuse, strappings, being dragged around by the ear, um, sexual abuse that shouldn't happen to little boys happened all in that first year. And there was uh, uh, always so much hunger, always so much loneliness. And it was the very last place that a child should be brought up in. And we were always um, undernourished. And, and when we were uh, thinking we were going to be educated, there were no real classrooms that were conducive to learning. And because of the brutality of some of the early teachers, we used to get cuffed around a year and I started losing my hearing real early, leaving that place for the final time. And I stood at the top of the steps of St. Michael's Indian Residential School. I realized I had nowhere to go. I had no sense of value as a human being, no sense of purpose as a human being. I was just broken and had already descended into alcoholism as a young teenage boy. One of the emotions in those schools was a sheer loneliness, just deep, deep loneliness. You could never understand it or describe it. So I left that school and I, one day I said to myself, I'd been out two or three years now, logging and fishing, I said, oh, I know I'm gonna fix this loneliness. I'm gonna get married and have children, lots of children. So I got married, had a lot of children. I didn't know that there are some things you should know about marriage and partnerships and relationships and fatherhood. Uh, I knew none of that, none of that, those skill sets had ever been taught to me. So eventually and very quickly, I lost my wife and my family and really descended into despair and, and uh, alcohol addiction. And one day I had this uh, epiphany uh, on a boat and it was really, I'm going to make it real short, but the story on the epiphany is that I came to a place in my life that I absolutely gave up. I, and I cried and I wept and I said, God help me. And I was alone on the back of this boat. There was no other human being in sight. They were all still sleeping. But as I said, God help me, even though I was angry at God for a long time now, just because my life was unfolding. When I said, God, I'll, uh, uh, help me, I started to see through my tears. And I could see the ocean. Um, uh, it was so beautiful and powerful and green and coral and had energy flashing through it. And I saw the other side of the channel. I saw the forest, lush and green and lightning bolts going through that. As I gazed to the heavens, I heard this voice say to me, in spite of what you've done to yourself, I love you and you're part of all of this. And I, I came back to the moment and it transformed my life. I began to love myself and I loved others. And I wanted to be I'm not that little broken boy that felt he didn't belong anywhere and that nobody cared. And no, most of the little children who went to those schools felt that way when they left, right? But, so I had, the, I had this divine intervention that gave me hope. I live with hope every day, not just for Aboriginal people anymore, but it's about us as Canadians, about the well-being of every person who lives here with us together as citizens. 
that we ought to be nurturing our relationships, looking after each other, holding each other up, uh, and just caring and mitigating the harm. We have such a diverse society now. Uh, you go to Vancouver or go to Toronto, everybody's there. And I know that they're already building silos and walls and they're afraid of each other. And we don't want anything like residential schools to ever happen again. And so we've got to cradle that difference and celebrate that difference and hold people up so that they know that they're welcome and they belong to this country. Mm. When you talk about the horrors of residential school abuse, it's obviously hard to hear. Nobody wants that for any child. You seem to speak of it without bitterness, though. So was forgiveness, part, has that been part of your journey? You know what, when I, when I had that epiphany, uh, it was really sort of instant. And I really wanted to be well, and I wanted to be whole, and I called it healing. But along the way, you keep discovering what Creator God has in mind for you. That it's not only a matter of healing, it's a matter of forgiving, first yourself and then others. And then you continue down this road and you come to this other possible impediment that says reconciliation and you get angry and you say, I don't want to reconcile with these people. But then you realize that if you don't, you can't be whole. Mm -hmm. And you start losing your footing again and you, you can't love completely unless you're reconciled in inwardly, right?